Hi there. I'm Dave Prosper, and I'm here to help show you how to find some cool astronomy stuff in the skies this week. So even if you're in the middle of a city full of light pollution, you can still see some really cool stuff, especially this week because there is a lunar eclipse happening, and you can literally see this anywhere. Well, as long as the sun's not out, and if you have clear skies. Uh, but if you have a lot of light pollution, you can still see it. Um, in fact, I have a picture here time lapse some folks took in uh, China from, I believe, Beijing. This was an astronomy picture of the day. And boom, middle of the city, huge city. Look how good this picture is. Um, so the big news is the lunar eclipse. It's happening in the morning of January 31st. So that's this Wednesday morning. And yes, so there's this whole name people are loving to say, and it, this whole coincidence of different things happens once every hundred, well, it hasn't happened for 150 years, it could happen soon after, um, but it's a super blue blood moon. Um, I'll explain what that means in a second, uh, but the most important part to take out of all of this is it's a lunar eclipse, which is the blood moon part of it is, and so it's gonna look awesome. Uh, folks on the east coast of the US, y'all might feel a little cheated because um, the moon's going to set before totality hits. That's the point where uh, the moon becomes uh, blood red. Uh, so that's the uh, blood moon people talk about. And no, it does not do any of the uh, summon ghouls like in the kind of disappointing American horror story season, which I watched the whole thing. Um, yes, so blood moon, boom, that. Uh, people are going to see it from kind of like the Mississippi River towards the west coast onwards. Um, sunrise happens at like seven, a little after seven for the east coast, and for most of America, give or take a few minutes. Um, but the eclipse begins at, the totality begins at around 7.50, so it's gonna be definitely after the moon sets and the sun rises. Um, why I'm kind of saying the sunrise and sunset is the moon and sun are kind of right at the opposite ends on either side of the earth, how the geometry works. So as the moon, so in this case, as the moon rises, the, uh, or as the moon sets, the sun's gonna rise. You can kind of see that in this picture here, um, which hopefully is mirrored properly for you. Uh, I think it is. Uh, you can kind of see how the sun's on one side. And this is obviously not the scale. Um, we'd be fried if the sun was this close. But yeah, boom, shadow of the earth onto the moon there. These other parts here, the penumbra, that's when the shadow's kind of part of the Earth's shadow, the lighter part falls on the moon. Um, that's kind of where you'll see some of it, and people in New York City will still see part of this kind of falling on it. So it looks kind of cool and eerie, with the cool red part of totality, which is sort of the uh, remnants of light getting bent and refracted by the Earth's atmosphere. So you get that reddish tinge, a little bit like how you get sunsets and you get that red color. That's kind of there. Uh, anyway, that's why sunrise, this eclipse kind of ends this time. It's always going to be just kind of the way this is. Um, anyway, oh yeah, we'll get to this in a second. <laughs> So yeah, so it's gonna be a blood moon. People, West Coast onwards will see it, I think in Chicago-ish area, the, you'll see the blood moon literally right before the moon sets and the sun rises. West Coast will be able to see all of totality. Um, Australia and uh, Asia, Hawaii, you will all have a great view as you can see in this chart here from Fred Espinak. Did this for NASA here, let's see. Oh, let me get out of the print view here. So you can see there, no eclipse visible for it's mostly in Europe. Sorry guys, big chunk of you won't see anything. Um, East Coast, you'll see uh, some of it, but not totality. You get totality further out here. This white area, no shading, best view. You see it all night, the whole thing. I mean, you can find this at the NASA Eclipse website. Um, you can also go to timeanddate.com and type in your location and it'll give you eclipse info too, which is like tailor-made just for your exact location, which is really cool. Uh, anyway, um, what are those other couple things like the blue moon, 
and super moon. Okay, so I'll do blue moon first. Uh, so you heard once in a blue moon, um, and it's you know just an expression. The moon doesn't actually turn blue. It does turn blue sometimes. It's from pollution or whatever. Um, but generally, the expression means uh, it's a term that kind of comes from when we used to have uh, like the lunar cycle was one month. Uh, it wasn't like more an abstracted calendar like we use now. So you would never have two full moons in the same month, which is what a blue moon is. It's two full moons in one month. So this is the second full moon in January. It's a blue moon in the kind of the pre-Caesar times, because um, we kind of use this variant on the Roman slash Gregorian calendar. Um, the months weren't chopped up into these like boom, 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 like they are now. Um, Post Caesar monkeying around with the calendar. You now have uh, sometimes once in a while you have a blue moon, that two full moon in a month thing. Um, it's still pretty rare. So you can still say once in a blue moon. It still means, yeah, that's rare. Um, so, yes, also, this is, you might have also heard it's a super moon. Uh, so, you, you won't be able to tell the difference really between this being a full moon. Um, that's a super moon, and like if you're like a month now, it's a full moon. It's a regular full moon or a mini moon. Naked eye, you can't really tell. Um, but um, it will be a little bit brighter. And if you've actually been, if you take pictures regularly with a digital, like a DSLR, with the same settings, telephotoed in, you have everything exact, you'll notice if you compare the pictures, like super moon, mini moon, say. Um, you can see there's a little bit of a size difference, but at the how far away the moon is from us, which is you take like your I heard your pinky and hold it up to your eyes point of view. It's usually about how much the moon covers in the sky, and uh, that you take this picture, put it out that far, so it might, you can't really tell. Maybe if you're super skilled observer like Tico Brahe kind of level, maybe. Um, we also don't have two moons next to each other to compare in this guy too. You're just going off memory of the last one. Um, suggestion goes a long way. It's like I heard the supermoon. Ooh, it looks real bright. You know, of course you'll think it's much brighter. And technically, it is a little brighter. Um, anyway, the telephoto project is a fun thing. If you've got a DSLR, you can make your own spoon comparison pictures. Uh, take a picture of the full moon all year round and put them together in a little calendar or something. But there are a couple interesting things from it. Um, tides do get a little stronger. Um, the same with the eclipse because of the sun, moon, earth alignments as it is and everything's kind of maximized. The moon's a little closer to earth. The super moon is bigger just because it's literally a little closer to earth in its orbit. So you know, gravity is a little closer. But you're not going to get, you know, anything traumatic. Sometimes you'll see people hyping it up and it's going to be a disaster or herald something. People love doing this with astronomy things. You're not going to get you know, day after tomorrow, tsunami or whatever, it's not going to happen. It's not. Um, it's literally just the moon's a little closer than it is when it's furthest out to the Earth. So, you know, it's still neat. Um, but it's mostly hype. Um, but, you know, it's coming with a lunar eclipse, so it's cool. It's a little bigger lunar eclipse. Um, so anyway, yes, it's a a super blue blood moon, which is a bit aristocratic, but you know, it's happening in the morning, so it's kind of a breakfast moon, right? You know, bacon moon, donut moon, whatever you want to call it. So the eclipse is happening early morning. So I'm on the West Coast, I get to catch all of totality, and it hits, you know, at a great time. I'm waking up, and um, I'm waking up a little early to catch it, but I'll make my coffee, and maybe I'll treat myself to a donut or a croissant or even a blood orange, because I love blood oranges. Anyway, hopefully you got clear skies to see this. It's not like the solar eclipse last year, because the solar eclipse was like, you know, very small path, like two minutes, two and a half minutes, you're done. So if a cloud flies in right even as totality happens, oh no, I can't see anything. Your weather might change. Um, you've got about an hour of totality, I think a little more. Um, it'll be great. Um, even if it's a little cloudy, keep peeking for it. Maybe you, if you have a chance to drive around a bit, check the weather station or whatever, kind of see the weather map, be like, oh, 
five miles away, it's totally clear. I'll go here, you know, or it's gonna clear up here in like 10 minutes. So wait, and it'll clear up. Um, even if like, or you can even like see the, the spooky fog rolling around the moon, you know. So it'll be cool. Check out the blood moon, it'll be great. Hopefully you'll have good weather. We might just be fogged in here in the Bay Area, unfortunately, but I'm crossing my fingers, you never know. Um, anyway, I might make more of these in the future. It's real rough. Thanks for keeping with this. And I will um, maybe check in with another cool thing to watch in a week or two. Take care, y'all. And may you have clear skies.